Good evening. My name is Brother Tony Martin. I am a junior minister from Apostolic Tabernacle of Felicianos. My pastor is Pastor Chad Mills. Uh, I want to start off by saying thank you to Pastor Mills for giving me this opportunity to be able to, to do this devotion, to be able to help out in any way that I can during this time. Um, the last few ministers that have done these devotions have done an outstanding job, and I just hope I can I can do it as good as they can, as as good as they did. Um, but then again, I just want to thank Brother Mills, and I want to thank all the other ministers who have done it already, and I want to thank the ones that are going to do it. Um, but at this time, I want to start off by going to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, God, to say thank you, God, for allowing us to be able to partake of this devotion, God, to be able to, to get a word, God, even through this perilous time, Lord. God, I pray for my pastor and his family, Lord, that, that he use wisdom, God, that you, you guide them in the right direction, God, in the decisions that they need to make, Lord. God, I pray for this nation. I pray for our leaders, God. And I pray for each and every church around this country, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I have a little short devotion here. It's, it's, it's not going to be long. Um, so I'm not going to try to hold you up too long. I understand that people get off of work late in the evenings. The ones that, you know, the essential workers um such as myself <laughs> that uh we do have a lot of stuff that we still have to do after you know we get off work and everything else so i'm not going to keep you that long this evening but if you would at this time just bear with me i got a uh, just a, a few verses that i want to read and it's going to be from 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 14, 14 through 19. So just bear with me. And it says, Now Elijah was fallen sick of his sickness, wherefore, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon thy bow. And put, and he put his hands upon it. He put his hands upon it. And Elijah put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, till thou have consumed them. He said, and he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he, smite, he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smitten Five or six times, thou has till thou has consumed it. Or then hast thou smite Syria till thou has consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria, but thrice. As I read this this passage, um, I think that uh, that the king of Israel really. Yeah, I believe that he followed the his man of God. But uh, I also feel that he didn't give it his all. And as I go back and I read this scripture about how in verse number 16, it says, And Elijah said unto him, Take bow and arrows, 
and he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hands upon it. And Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Right there, that tells me that, that Elijah was fulfilling his job, his, his duty, which was to, uh, to lead and to guide the, the king of Israel as he was supposed to. But as I, as I study it, and I, and I look it out, and uh, I see where it says, you know, God's grace is not tied to one hand. He can bury his workmen and yet carry on his work. You know, to animate the king against the Syrians, he gives him a sign. Orders him to take bow and arrows. To imitate to him that in order to the deliverance of his kingdom from the Syrians, he must put himself in a military position or a military posture and resolve to undergo the perils and fatigues of war. God would be the agent, but he must be the instrument. And that he should be successful, he gives him a token by directing him to shoot an arrow towards Syria. The king, no doubt, knew how to handle a bow. Um, I feel that the king of Israel has been in war before and that he's no stranger to a bow. He knows his way around it, you know, so to speak. And, and uh, he's, he's handled a bow better than the prophet has, better than Elisha. But and yet, because the arrow now to be shot was to have its significancy from the divine institution as of command from the prophet, put thy hands up on the bow, open the window, and shoot. Okay. Elisha was guiding him, was directing him in the way that the Lord told him to direct him. he had been a child is almost as if he was given directions as if he was being a child that had never drew a bow before so Elijah puts his hands upon the king's hands to signify that in all his expeditions against the Syrians he must look up to God for direction for strength he must reckon his own hands not sufficient for him, but go on in a dependence upon divine aid. <clears throat> you know, it says in Psalms that he teacheth my hands to war. The trembling hands of a dying prophet as they signified the concurrence and communication of the power of God gave this arrow more force than the hands of the king in all his strength. God's anointing, God's power is stronger than anything. God's love is stronger than any two-edged sword. It's, it is stronger than anything known to man. Um, But then as it goes on and it talks about how Elijah said, take the arrows and smite the ground for, you know, smite the ground until him, until you consume the, he said he took the rulers, no. He said he told the king of Israel, smite up on the ground and he smote thrice and stayed he said smite take the arrows and smite on the ground basically tell him smite until you consume your enemy so he did and he only done it three times 
and that made that made Elisha mad because Elisha knew he could have he could have smite the ground as many times as he wanted to, but now that since he's only had he only smited the ground three times thrice, that's the only times that he's going to overcome Syria, and then after that the Syrians are going to take over. It said the king showed not that eagerness and flame which one might expect one might have expected upon this occasion but smote thrice and no more either out of foolish tenderness of the syrians he smote as if he was afraid of hurting them at least of ruining them willing to show mercy to those that never did nor ever would show mercy to him or his people or perhaps he smote thrice and very coldly because he thought it but a silly thing. He thought that he was he was too powerful for this. That he, he he was too proud for this. This is this is like some kind of childish game. Like, what are you trying to do? What you know, what what is this gonna prove? The king to beat the floor with his arrows and thrice was often enough for him to play the fool merely to please the prophet see if he would have gave it his all as if we give our all to the church to the kingdom of god then god would give us his all you know there's too many times that we go through life just barely skating by saying you know i can do just enough just to get by god don't want us to do just barely enough to get by god wants to give us or god wants us to give him everything that we have but therefore god only asks for 10 percent 10 percent does not mean just tithes money 10% of your time you wake up in the morning and you spend one hour in prayer or you spend 30 minutes in prayer start off 15 minutes of prayer every morning come to the evening time spend another 15 minutes in prayer or throughout the day make it to where you get up to at least an hour of prayer a day and then continue to go more than that to what you can do I mean we give God our all, then he'll give us his all. Draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you. But I'm not going to draw nigh unto you until you draw nigh unto me. You know, it also says in, uh, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give I thee. He knew when the man asked him for alms, when he asked him for money, he said, I do not have money. If I had silver and gold, I would give it to you. If I had money, I would give you everything I have, but I don't. But what I will give you is much more valuable than gold or silver. I will give you what I have. And what I have What I have is the gift of the gift of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I can help you with that. You know, I, I just rivers of living water. That's what God is. God is rivers of living water. You know, we give us we give God our all. And God will give us his all. So start off with your, start your day off with prayer. Start your day off with reading a scripture every morning. Just to, just to get your, get your day started with God. And you just wait and see. When you start doing that, watch and see just how better your day gets. Now, I'm not going to say you're not going to have any trials. You're not going to have bad days as well. But you'll have twice as many good days as you do bad days. So I'll just leave this with you. 
Prayer is your number one weapon in any battle that you ever will fight. Pray. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is just waiting to hear from you. Thank you for for taking out your time to to listen to these, these few words that I have this evening. God bless you. And I hope your week is great. I hope you have a great week. In Jesus' name.